Hi, I'm John Nesmith, and uh, before we get into these questions, I think it's essential to address what exactly a business model is. A business model describes the rationale of how, of how an organization produces, distributes, and acquires value. Now, I'd also like to say that uh, when I refer to the recording company, I'm going to refer to it here and after as the company. How does the business model affect what kind of music the company produces? And to answer this kind of music, we need to know that the business model boils down to three things. What are the company's goals? What product does the company offer? And what are the consumer desires? In no particular order, the company needs to look at what kind of products they want to produce. Is it going to be country? Is it going to be pop? Is it going to be rap? Is it going to be jazz? There are so many different genres and subgenres to choose from in this day and age. And the company must also look at um, what does the customer want? What has gone mainstream? What dominates popular culture? And from there, the company can then decide what kind of music is in its best interest uh, to produce. Now, what kind of features must music have to be successful uh, in this industry? And as recently as 2018, a Nielsen data report has shown that um, hip hop music has taken over rock music as the most profitable and uh, consumed genre of music in the world. Now, this suggests that in order to be successful, the company wants to invest in hip hop and a hip hop artist. Historically, the defining components of hip hop consist of a syncopated drum rhythm, the use of turntables, and rhyming, which is uh, uh, referred to as rapping. While these may seem archaic, hip hop and its various subgenres still incorporate uh, these kinds of components into their music today. Now, besides picking up a successful genre like hip, like hip hop, the company can further their success by making themselves a system that takes advantage of the digital age that exists before them. Now, I, I call this the modern approach to music. Uh, prior to smartphones and social media, ad campaigns in their traditional form were utilized to publicize the brand, the artist, and the music, often at a very, very steep price. Now, by utilizing this modern approach to music, the company can benefit from numerous pros. Um, they can exploit the artists, they can, uh, they can exploit their music at very minimal cost because of social media. Uh, a survey that I went over shows that um, social media is the cheapest form of advertisement today and it is one of the only form of medias that can expose your ad to over 1,000 people for less than $3. And um, Artists that sign to the company can also connect with consumers. Uh, traditionally, there are no um, artist consumer relationships. Everything was done via the company. Uh, but as aforementioned, with the rise of social media platforms, artists can now connect with their fans, and uh, that makes them seem authentic. This persona level of authenticity contributes to the financial success of the artist and the company overall. Conversely, with the advances of technology, um, you have piracy. Uh, the University of Delaware conducted an um, intellectual property study and found that as much as 200 to 250 billion per year is lost in the music industry due to piracy. Now, with regards to profit, sure, the best music can be seen as uh, the most popular. However, um, however just because music is profit profitable does not mean it's good. Um, I believe whether or not music is good is strictly a matter of opinion. And to elaborate further on opinion is the concept of vulgarity in music. I don't believe it is a society's responsibility as a whole to dampen the uh, freedom of expression via music when it comes to adults. However, when it comes to adolescent listeners, I think that they need some type of monitoring. Uh, a medical journal uh, published in 2009 by the American Academy of Pediatrics suggested that music videos and music, specifically the ones in rock and rap music with their vulgarity, have an adverse effect in adolescence. And um, I believe it is the individual responsibility, which is the parent of the household or parents, to mitigate this kind of exposure to children because there is just no appropriate situation where your child or a child in general should be uh, listening to the glorification of sex, money, or drugs. Besides that, people can listen to whatever they want and they can do however they want it, as long as they don't endanger themselves or the general welfare. Thanks for listening.